I'm at Kale's house right now, and Kale is here this year. Hi. We just f finished packing up the truck, and it's it's definitely packed. Yeah, it's, it's packed. It's definitely packed, and all trains. We have no, just enough room to bring stuff home, though. That's right. <laughs> I hope. Yeah, hopefully I don't buy a bell or something. We won't have space for that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be tossing out. We, yeah, like uh, we don't need this. Just have anymore. to. We'll just have to ship ship that back. <laughs> but where are we going? We're going to the Amherst uh, Railway Show in Springfield, Connecticut, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. It's almost Connecticut. It's almost Connecticut. Why do, it's yeah. It's like, it's close to Connecticut. It's, it's over the border from Connecticut. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so that's where we're going. And it's what time is it right now? Time to leave. Time to leave, I think. <laughs> we yeah, we just put all of my stuff into Kale's truck, and as far as I can remember, there's nothing else in my car. So, mm -hmm. all right, let's get the show on the road. We're here. We're at the Big E Center. Yeah, it's called the Big E. The Big E. Uh, Eastern States Exposition yep, Fairgrounds, all Exposition of the above. Center. We're in our corner. This is our corner. This is like where they always put put us, us nerds. There's Monty. There's Monty. This is the vlog. I'm trying. I'm trying to see if I can upload the vlog like not ten months late this time. We'll see. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good about this one. This is going to be a good show, I think. So it's about uh, 9.45, 10 o'clock. We've been here for a little while. I just published a new model at the time of recording this. Uh, my main Central 470, uh, as of right now, has been out in the world for just a little bit. So it took a little bit of uh, doing to do that. Um, I actually didn't bring my laptop with me because Kel had his and I was just, yeah, I'll... Uh, I Google drived everything to myself, all the photos and uh, descriptions and everything like that. And put, uh, I was like, yeah, I'll just post it from Kale's laptop. And then we got here and I don't know how to use a Mac. I'm a PC computer person and Kale's laptop is a MacBook. So that was a little difficult. So Kale helped me do that, um, for which I am extremely grateful. But we got the, got the posts made. Everything's live. Um, not that it matters right now, but I'll be displaying 470 both, uh, the new model 470 both at the Lego layout this weekend and at the New England Steam Corporation uh, booth. So hopefully I'll get uh, at least a couple of photos of it in both locations. Um, but anyways, so what we have here is uh, kind of all of the tables with black skirting that you see is the LGMS section. Um, L gauge modular standard. We're putting together another modular layout this year. We're working in conjunction with the New England Lego Users Group, which is uh, kind of this section back here. Um, this is technically their show and we're tagging along with them. So the uh, LGMS guys are of course very grateful for New England Lego Users Group to allowing it, for allowing us to do that. But uh, it's gonna be quite, uh, quite something. I think we're something like 30 by 80 feet this year. I think we're 20 feet longer than last year, which is already pretty big and now it's 20 feet bigger so 80 feet that direction by 30 feet so we have basically i don't know how i would describe this but kind of like kind of like one section over there and one section over here but there's like a loop that connects around all the outside of all of them so we'll be able to run trains over the entirety of the layout there will be some dedicated loops on this side of the layout for like steam locomotives because steam locomotives get temperamental it's just the way that it is so that's probably where i'll be doing most of my operating and hanging out um which i'm very much looking forward to i've got my engines uh, tuned back up again i actually just did some work this past week on uh 763 to bring that back into specification so we should be good to go for that i'm definitely excited to uh see if i can get it working pretty well this weekend um, it was working pretty well before I put it in the box, so I think I'm, I'm in pretty good, pretty good spirits with it. The rest of the show is going to be fantastic as always. Uh, if you have never gone to the Amherst Model Railway Society show, definitely do it if you ever get the chance. It's a good show, it's going to be a lot to enjoy. This is just Friday, by the way, so it's basically an entirely a setup day. 
and then Saturday and Sunday are like public hours and uh, convention hours and stuff like that. So I'm going to go see if I can be helpful with anything and uh, check back in with you guys later. All right, <laughs> sit rep, Kale, what did we just finish doing? We leveled some tables. We leveled some tables. So from right there all the way down to right here is perfectly level. Now why that's important is because trains get unhappy when you do this with them. But we learned that between that corner right there and right there, there is about nine sixteenths of an inch difference in floor height. The floor is sloping down like that. So that's why leveling the tables is important. So that's what we did. Also, before I forget, Kale gave me a gift. Western Maryland, number 1880. One of one customized Northeastern caboose from Kale. There's a good reason for having this and we'll hopefully see more about why that is later. So right now Kale and I are putting together a puzzle that doesn't have any, there's no directions for this. Most puzzles don't have directions. Either. Well, that's true, but <laughs> we're getting there. We've already got, uh, Got this section done. All of the tables are leveled. Took a break for a little bit. Monty's got uh, a lot of staging yards set up. Don't worry about that yet. It's gonna be quite a layout. Gonna be quite a layout. All right, sit rep. JT's here. And we set up tables for his stuff. This is his uh, corner here. Kale is working on uh, detailing the rest of his layout, or section of the layout. Rob and Monty are in progress of uh, working on the back stretch. <clears throat> Pretty good shape. I'm gonna help JT. Cool with the headlight in the rain. It does. 12 also a porter? Uh, 12 is an Alco. Uh, oh, this is a porter? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Basically, we went to dinner um, with some friends. We ended that, joined um, the Lego guys back again, and then um, went back to the hotel, and then went to bed, and now it's Saturday morning. We're here at the show. Kale and JT and I got here just a little bit ago. Um, got breakfast, something to eat, and now we're in, uh, in train show mode. So, uh, being about 8, 15, 8.30 right now, what I'm gonna do for a little bit is test run one of my engines, uh, 470 specifically. The test run 470 and see how it works. Um, and then I actually have to bring it over to the New England Steam Corporation booth for uh, this weekend. Um, I uh, they are uh, graciously allowing me to display it on their table. Hopefully it will uh, garnish some interest and uh, draw people into the display and encourage some donations for them. That would be awesome. But I would like to see how it runs uh, with some passenger cars behind it, so I'm going to try to do that and get some clips of it and see if I can uh, make it work pretty well. We do have a dedicated steam locomotive loop around this portion of the layout, so I'm um, hoping that the, uh, the dedicated loop will be uh, worth doing. I think it will be. Just got to uh, start up an engine and see what happens. So let me do that and uh, hopefully get some video.
Matt, I'm vlogging. Uh, <laughs> we're, we'll, are you doing a vlog this show? Uh, I will be. I've uh, yet to get the camcorder out there. All right, perfect. Glorious 1440p. There you go. That's that's higher resolution than I do. <laughs> so we have an Aegis Steam Consist out. 12 X29 and 1880. Both of the rolling stock is by Kale, actually. Yes. <laughs> I need to build more rolling stock. You do. <laughs> more Age of Steam rolling stock. That's right. Ask me that again. Are you vlogging? What do you think? Evidently, yes. Yes. <laughs> time, to sh time to shop. Walking around. Saturday, we look for stuff to buy. Sunday, we rail fan. It's a plan. Thank you. We're off to a pretty good start. Books, pins. So far, so good. Slow approach to the signal. Oh, oh no, I gave a port. That's all right, I gotta pull it off. The switch Tom off. Terrible training. Training handling needs. Alright, hey Tom, you're aligned out to the yard. I'm blind. You're okay. lined. Must be calm. We feed the switch with the needle. Hey JT, hold there for a second. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. All right. Now, JT, you can come on through now with your line. He's on here. The world's most unlikely beat between the central Vermont and the nickel plate. I need to change line. We can do that again. Oh, it's all right. That's okay. <laughs> uh, Josh, a member of Penlog, who built this building, yeah. um, he he used those windows, and I really don't mind why. Uh, Perfect. It's a bunch of upside down. I don't know what it is. I'm trying to figure out. 
Been a very good day, a busy day. Um, Kellen, JT, and I began the day by walking around the show. We started in the Better Living Center, which is one of the four buildings that they have here, and one of the larger, the largest of those four buildings. We're in the other one right now. We started there and basically kind of worked our way towards where we're at. We didn't even go through all of what was there in the two hours and 45, 30 minutes that we were walking around. But we did get some stuff. I showed some of that, that off early. I got the uh, ticket punch for uh, my New York Central uniform. I got New York Central patches. I don't know if you can tell, but these actually still have the uh, gold bullion, which is what they called it, on those. And then I got some more, slightly more plain sewn patches. I believe these are sewn, but they're very nice. I got those. And then I got a copy, finally, of No Thy Late Mohawks. I have the early Mohawk book which is classes L1 through L2. These are um, L3 and L4. So, very happy to have that. Came back and we've been running trains pretty much ever since. Um, I was able to run 763 earlier today and I got a fantastic problem-free hour and 15 minutes out of that, which I'm very pleased about. Um, I don't uh, often end up running a whole lot on some LDMS layouts just because a lot of the nature of show May layouts. May I have your attention, please? Scott Osterweil. Anyways, I got a good performance out of 763. Sometimes show layouts do not lend themselves well to running big steam locomotives, particularly mine, and I'd be, I'm willing to admit this flat out. I do not build the most robust steam locomotives in the world, but when the layout is taken care of and well maintained and tended to and you put the effort into leveling the track and the cables beforehand i get really good performance out of my engines that's what we have this weekend and i'm very happy to say that because 763 ran perfectly for quite a good long while my entire hour that i had blocked out to run it was very good so i'm very pleased with that um, i also ran uh, my moorhead and north fork 12 for just a little bit and of course i ran my copy, my model, my brand new model of Main Central 470 earlier this morning uh, before I uh, brought it over to the New England Steam Corporation table for them to display. Now, in the later part of the day, I ended up bringing that model back to the layout and it's sitting over on the display track right now. The reason I did that is because um, uh, Richard Gleck, the gentleman who is one of the largest driving forces behind why I built that model of Main Central 470 uh, was here at the show today. And so this is the first time that I've met him in real life and the first time that he had seen my model of 470. So I uh, had to take a trip all the way basically across the, across the show from one corner to the other, quite literally, and grab that model and bring it back so I could uh, show it to him. And um, I was able to do that, thankfully. And I was able to operate it uh, for a little bit um, for him because he had never seen it before. And it ran perfectly well. We, uh, I got a couple laps out of it just, uh, just while he was here. And then we sat down and talked about it for a while and he was very complimentary of my work with that model. And hearing that was probably one of the most gratifying parts of this entire show. Because to hear 
a such a high praise for a model that I've designed from the former president of the group that owns the real model, the real locomotive, is the highest praise that I can receive as a modeler, as a prototype modeler. So it was a big moment. And to be completely honest, it, it was a little bit emotional, but I'm very, very happy with how the day has gone. Um, that was definitely the highlight of the day. So. It's been quite a good day. You probably have heard Kale's Pensy A5 running in the background, which is the loudest engine here by far, I would say. Um, we're about, we're less than 15 minutes towards the, to the end of the show today. Um, but it's been a very, very, very good day, I think, for just about everybody involved here. Been a good group of people, good layout. The layout has been fantastic. We haven't had any major problems on the layout at all, um, which is always a good thing, of course. So we'll be wrapping up here in just a little bit and then we'll be going out for some food and then probably we'll pick it back up tomorrow. So let's keep, see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> Unless like you're from Pennsylvania already. and you're like, can you leave the state now? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yes. Brilliant. Every time. Show's closed. We're chilling out. We're gonna go to dinner soon. On that note, this is the only train show I've ever been to where they sell alcohol at the show. Yeah, I was in right next to our booth. It's almost like they know we're gonna have to put up with the clowns all day. <laughs> Group dinners at conventions get really weird. You guys are all on the vlog now. Say hi. I will say about the clown show, at least it's not directly facing us. This yeah, year. that's actually really nice. It's facing. Once again, good morning. Hi. Oh, sorry. We're vlogging now. We're vlogging now. Sunday morning. We're back here at the layout. I don't know what time it is, but the uh, show opens at 10 today instead of 9. So we got here super early. We've been just hanging out for a little bit. Uh, I got some more clips of 470 running, which was, uh, which was really nice. I will be walking back to the New England Steam booth uh, in a little bit to drop that off for them to display uh, again for most of today. Um, I have a couple of engines that I'd like to run today. Uh, ideally, I'd like to try to run 19, the Mohawk, and uh, BCNG 13. We're going to try and put a cold drag behind 13 today. I'm kind of looking forward to that. Um, and then 19 and the Mohawk just because I want to run them. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. Uh, we are going to walk around a little bit more this morning before the show gets too hectic. We're going to try and be away from the layout for a couple hours at the beginning of the day. It's kind of our usual schedule. Um, and then come back and pretty much man the layout for the rest of the day. So we able to do that. Uh, I got a couple other things that I want to make sure that I try and see and people I'd like to try and visit today. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, have just as good of a day today as we did yesterday. Um, when we were at dinner last night, pretty much everybody agreed that it was a good day. And for me in particular, this is so far has been one of the best train shows that I can remember being to. Just the uh, the company, the layout, the trains, the people I've talked to have been absolutely amazing. Having 470 done finally and being able to show that off is the best feeling in the world, especially considering the audience that I have this weekend. I've gotten a lot of good questions about it. A lot of people recognize the locomotive, um, recognize the model, um, recognize me even which is always really weird for uh, to happen to me. Um, I'm just some guy. 
but it's been an amazing weekend so far. So we've still got all of Sunday. I think the show hours run today run 10 to five, and then obviously we'll have to pack up um, and then we'll be driving back to Kale's house at the end of the day today um, after the show is over. But uh, that's all still to come. We've got a couple of, uh, good couple of hours or so before the show starts. So I'm gonna see if I can get a couple other things ready to go and get the day started. So we'll check in with you later. Stop recording. Sunday morning. We're spending Sunday morning. We're, I've already spent more money. Yes. I haven't spent any money this morning. You haven't spent any money yet. Not this morning. Are you in the mood to buy something stupid? Always. Let's find you something. Alright. It's been a busy morning already, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people to talk to, a lot of places to go. And more on the way. This is one of my favorite layouts at the show. I agree. It's it it's so nice like this is the kind of scenery that i would like to do with lgms someday or would like to see more of on lgms I agree. it's so it's it, three on all points. and it's very well presented too like i think it's oh yeah it's so i mean obviously stuff like that i think i took video of this module last year yeah is this one is this one is i think my favorite with the street running in the middle and all of the the town scenery and the backdrop. I think this is one of the coolest modules I think I've ever seen. It's imagine this is an LGM straight running like this, double main. I think that would be awesome. That would be really cool. And look, they've got the cars halfway in the building. It's a bit of Delaware Avenue flavor. Oh my God, this is. This, I want this. I I, I, do, I do too. Wiscass at Waterville and Farmington. Donate them money. They are working to restore number 10 so they can recreate photos like this, which is an awesome photo. Who wouldn't want to do that? Got the bell. And they have a two foot gauge hand car here. How cool is that? So this is Dan and Nick. These guys are with the WWNF Museum in uh, Alma, Maine. Give me like a 30 second elevator pitch. Uh, oh, elevator pitch? If That's you can. Hard. Um, well, uh, middle of nowhere, Maine. Middle, middle yeah, of nowhere, middle of nowhere, Maine. Nowhere, Maine. Two foot um, gauge. Old steam, our slogan old is, wherever you're from, it might be 2024, but here it's 1910. So, there you go. Yes. I mean, if you come by, we're like a step back in history. They yeah. really are. All of the photos and videos that I've seen of you guys are just amazing. And Dan is, both of these guys are like, prodding me to get up to Maine <laughs> yes. and visit. You I'll make it up there so. sometime, I promise. So if you haven't already visited the WWNF, you need to do that. So thank you guys. No problem. Thank you. New England weather in the winter. And Kale's out here in two t-shirts. Oh, I, I got dandruff all over my shirt. <laughs> uh, I love scenes like this. This is really nice.
Well, a lot of trees to work. I used to watch those Instagram Rizzo videos. Yeah. You never see that. I don't know which company made this model, but every time I see a Crusader, I start thinking about it again. Well, there's brass, and then there was um, the GHB one. Yes. I don't. I, this might be the GHB. Every time I see it, I think about it again. And I want you to think about it more. I want I, you to I, think about it enough that at some point you. Uh, revisit it. I have another Pacific that needs cars for right now, though. Yeah, but you know, maybe it, let's not forget about this. I but, I, I haven't completely I haven't forgotten about it. No, don't forget about it. But you know, I know you have a list. So in time. In time. <laughs> So I, I finally met Brian. Brian is on Instagram as Bay State Bricks. Correct. He does incredible uh, Christmas layouts, yeah. Winter, yeah. Village yeah. Winter, layouts. Yeah, Winter, Winter Village theme layouts. Winter Village. And he's doing working on more. Working on more. Working on I have more. no more room to expand, so I've got to like find creative ways to change it up every year. Hey, there you go. It's, it's, it's what it's all about. It's always yeah. adapting and, and changing. Yep. Well, finally got to meet these uh, yeah, Lego train heavy hitters. Here. Everybody's here, yeah. and we finally got to meet Brian. So yeah. nice to meet you, and enjoy right. the rest of your likewise, day. Man. Take yeah, care. likewise. Have like a controller, or are they they just like one speed and it just goes. They are uh, battery operated and remote control. Uh, yep. it depends on the system that you're using, but you can do a couple of different things. The uh, way that I'm currently operating the coal train here uh, uses the Lego system of uh, control. So it's essentially seven speeds, one direction, seven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't pick it up by the handrail. Kale, don't pick it up by the handrail. By the way, Kale, did you... Back, we're back at the layout right now. Uh, what we're going to do here in a minute is Kale is going to power on his Pemsey A5 switcher. We're going to use that to build a Pennsylvania Railroad consist for his H10 and do some operation kind of, kind of things which uh, tend to be really fun. So I'm going to be the brakeman. Uh, in this case, Kale is going to be the engineer. Uh, we're going to build a train for the H10, then move the H10 out, couple the caboose on, and send the train over the road. So hopefully all of that will go well. I'll try to film uh, as much of that as possible and see what happens. All right, so right now Rob's train is coming into the Y corner. We're going to set off the Pennsylvania car, and he's going to pick up the Swift car. Do I need to be on that side? You'll be on this side. Okay, I'll be over here. What, what am I throwing? Uh, grab this. Okay. Should be recording. It is recording. Excellent. Hi, internet. Alright. Oh, this is a really good camera. You might want to tell yeah, hold, JT well, to we, stop. Yeah. Well, no, we're working around him. Well, he's here. He comes. Yep. We're aware. This is, this is railroading. <laughs> so 
Rob, what I would do is grab the fucking hopper and move it to this line and then grab it. You want both of them? Yeah, and then I'll back them. Bonnie, could you grab, could you take the raft car off of that one? Thank you. This is Lego. Yeah, you want me to get out of the way? Yeah, Switches are clear from passing the train. Part one. 94 is simmering in the yard. So our game plan, I think we should take 94, run down to Point of Rocks and pick up the R7 Reaper. Mm -hmm. And then we'll bring it back to our staging area and assemble the rest of the train. Sounds like a plan. All right. How's the inside line look? Uh, Rob, why don't you pull into the yard here? We'll wait on you and then head on onto the main. So you pull out front ways, Rob will pull in on this track. Hi. Rob, I've got you going on just behind my consist. All right, 94, take us to Point of Rocks. We're on to Point of Rocks? On to Point of Rocks. All right. See you in Point of Rocks. Point of Rocks. All right, Rob's taking over as brakeman. What I vote to do is go ahead and cross the main and occupy that siding before the express train gets back. So I'd go ahead and move over the line. We'll put you on the siding with the reefer. So I'd say we occupy that switch until the passenger train crosses back. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, stuff like, um, so in for train people, the 
straight tracks are normally low road, but stuff like the, these wide radius turnouts are all um, third party, and the third, the wide radius track is all third party. Um, the rods are normally third party for steam locos and Ford and diesels and electrics and stuff like that. The rods, um, the wheels are normally aftermarket as well. So. So, uh, so some stuff like 94, the, go ahead and come forward and tie onto the car. Have, use like the Lego time or just like that. They'll still use Lego wheels, but quite a lot of things like this Penchy Switcher will have custom wheels on because Lego don't make it. Alright, and cross back over. Um, for what we need. So. And you put the put the headlight back into the electrical shop. Yeah, no, you that. Bad order the headlight or the rear headlight. Um, so I'd get on out of there. It's on ish. It's slightly. Like, it's just dim. You have a dim selected. I have a dim selected. Alright, I'd go ahead and get out of here. Alright. Go ahead and cross back over the main. So, for example, if um, you buy like a kit from BMI or something like that, they'll give you the instructions. The aftermarket wheels are um, in the custom parts, not the kit, and you'll see the same as well. And so you just need to go with the source of one of those sets and um, aftermarket size for the shop. All right, go ahead and take us back to the staging yard. That way. The staging yard is that way. <laughs> hey, your headlight's on now. Oh, yeah. All right, we're gonna pick up this X29 and come back into the siding. Good tie. Go ahead and pull back forward out onto the line. Back. Okay, we're gonna pick this this cut up as well. I don't think we can get fast enough to find that out. I don't think there's enough length. There's there's always gonna be a turn that you gotta slow down. But I mean like like I was saying for the most part when they're when they're properly ballasted smoothly. You actually get a real nice job. Untie us there, Rob. Nice having two brakemen. All right, uh, take us forward. All right, I would shove back and leave those on the on the corner here. All right, you're tied on. You want to keep going? Keep shoving through.
That is a heavy consist. It's a lot to shove through as well. Go ahead and come on back. Do we want to put them, grab the hoppers now or grab the consist? All right, we'll grab the hoppers. Pull forward and tie into the hoppers on the dock. All right, you're on. Go and take us back. Go ahead and bring us back. So bring us forward and yeah, we'll hold it to hold before you enter the main. All right, go ahead and come forward. Go ahead and come forward. I can use it all day on these yards. It'd be fun. All right, Rob's got you for a minute. So you want to shove them all the way down. Uh, put them put him past the switch there. Uh, bring us back. We're going to tie onto the larger cut back here after JT passes us. So come on back. Is he picking them up? Yep. Yeah, we'll pick them up. Hold there. One car, half a car, 10 feet, five feet, that'll do. All right, go ahead and bring us forward. We're gonna cross the main once again. Is this Lego? Yeah, the layout, the, have you seen the Lego layout?
it's closer. Oh, we're all right. Going two cars to clear, one car to clear, and clear. It's that pesky passenger train. <laughs> One car, half a car, 10 feet, good tie. All right, take us back uh, 20 cars to tie onto the rest of the consoles. cars to clear. One car, half a car, anywhere in there is good. Now bring us back and hold in the siding. Anywhere in there is good, 94. I feel like it gets slower. Purpose, it's gotta be. He's screwing with us. Six cars, five, four, eighty two twenty. Main line is clear. You have the high ball. Thank you. 
and for my next trick, I will make my money disappear. What did you buy? I bought a New York, Ontario, and Western Lantern. That's a cool thing to buy, though. Yeah. Where is it? It's under the table. Why is it there? To keep it safe. Fair enough. I protect my investments. Fair enough. <laughs> It's been a very busy day. We've been really busy. <laughs> with, the lay busy. with the layout and trying to walk around. We didn't even get to walk around the Mallory building, our building, as much as we wanted to. And we're just over an hour until the show closes. So right now we're on our way to pick up 470 from the, uh, from the New England Steam Corp table. So we'll do that and then we'll begin to wrap up the show. All right, 470, we'll pull the final train of the show. Five o'clock, right on schedule. Goes over. Packing up. Only an hour after train stopped running. We know how to nuke a layout pretty well. Doesn't take long. Anything like that? We're out of here. But first, food. 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 All right, uh, I'm home. It's Tuesday after the show. I drove home yesterday night. And uh, I guess we can start to wrap this up. But I got a lot of stuff this weekend. So I thought it would be a good idea to look that over. And here at the end of the video. Right at the right beginning here, can eliminate this. Um, I bought this last year. This is a Brickmania kit. I bought this last year. And, well, Kale bought it for me, and he didn't have the chance to give it to me until this weekend. So, got that. Badge, doesn't really count. Uh, Kale gave me a few things, though, just as some gifts. First of all, he gave me a gift of one of the PNLE stations, which was pretty cool. A uh, postcard of it, unused. Pretty nice. Uh, he gave me one of the... Uh, BCNG hoppers that Rapido has done. If you don't know, he works for Rapido. Uh, I don't believe, I'm pretty confident in saying actually he did not do the artwork for this car, but it's BCNG and 
the company that he worked for made it, so it was very nice of him to give it to me. I'm very very happy to have it. That's one of the um, GLA hoppers, or I guess GLA copies. And then he gave me a goat. This is not a real Lego goat. Uh, apparently those are super expensive, which was something new to me, but he gave me a goat. Kind of a funny joke that he has, so. And then, uh, last but not least, this is kind of uh, the Christmas gift that he gave me this year. He gave me Western Maryland Caboose 1880. This is, uh, in case you don't know, this particular caboose is preserved at Age of Steam. So this is a northeastern caboose. It's actually an updated design compared to the brick model railroader design. Um, extensive updates and uh, one of one custom. He designed that... Uh, with the accurate interior specifically for me. So, thank you to Kale for all of that. It's awesome stuff. <clears throat> uh, more things that I did not buy are right here. Uh, Matt Dawson, if you saw, was uh, at, uh, at Amherst this, this year. He gave me one of his memorial bricks. This is actually, I'm pretty sure, no, this is just printed. Matt's Brick Railroad works on tour at Amherst 2024. So, thank you to Matt for that. And also, thank you to Matt for these items. This is a... Uh, just a print paper copy of a New York Central System map. 1940, New York Central timetable. Always love that. And the Gresley Pacifics by O.S. Knock, which was uh, an incredible gift, and I'm going to enjoy reading through that. I do enjoy the Gresley Pacifics. I don't know if or when I'll ever model one. Maybe never, but... Thank you to Matt for those gifts. These are incredibly thoughtful, and hopefully you're watching this, so thank you for that. Um, this actually, and so now we have to move over here because technically I didn't buy some of this either. I did not buy this book. This was given to me by Dan, who you saw towards the end of the video or the second half on Sunday, at least. Um, Dan and Nick, my good friends from the Wiscass at Waterville and Farmington, or the WWNF Railway Museum in all in the Maine. Dan gifted me this book, so I owe him something in uh, in exchange for this. Dan, if you're ever watching this, I will figure out something to uh, use to pay you back. Thank you for this. I'm looking forward to reading that. Uh, I also bought, thankfully, WWNF t-shirt, magnet patch, pin, and I sent him some donations, both in uh, both by card and uh, in paper, and I got one of these 3D printed... Um, I guess it would be a number plate, but it, they are working on restoring the number 10, which is actually that one on the magnet. So they're working on restoring that locomotive, one of the two-foot gauge engines. So they're raising funds for that, and I donated specifically for the fund of number 10. I also got a sticker from them, but it unfortunately did not quite survive the travel home. But thank you to Dan. Thank you to Nick for their hospitality this weekend. I ate dinner with them and uh, some friends on, on Friday night. That was awesome to uh, hang out more with them, guys. I'm really appreciative of uh, of you guys, and thank you for having me out on Friday. And I will, I promise, I will go to Maine sometime to see you guys. Don't know when, but sometime. Um, I bought a copy of Know They Late Mohawks. Uh, if you probably are familiar with my channel, you know that I have modeled an early Mohawk, which was an LTUA. Um, this book covers the later Mohawk classes, so like the L3s and L4s. Um, this is a pretty available book right now. They haven't sold out of these through the New York Central Historical Society. These are limited run, so I wanted to get one while I had the chance, um, and learn about the later Mohawks. I'm going to be, enjoy looking through that. These are incredibly detailed and technical and the kind of reading that I enjoy, so very glad to have that, of course. On the theme of New York Central at the same time, I did buy a couple of... Uh, two pairs of patches uh, for my New York Central uniform. I'm not sure which one I'll use or which would be more appropriate, but I bought one pair that is uh, looks like 100% threaded. These are very closely matching the thread uh, the patches that I have on my uniform jacket at the moment. But I also bought these, which are an oval style um, with the gold bullion on them. You can see that it's actually metallic and reflective. That's what they call gold bullion. So I bought those. I might be looking into getting another pair uh, at some point that would be similar to this, but have the gold bullion style. We'll see. Um, but very happy to have those. That was uh, that was a neat find. And kind of in a similar vein, I bought an extra ticket punch. 
The ticket punch that I have right now uh, that I use uh, at some points punches a keystone. A keystone ticket punch does not necessarily feel the most appropriate for a New York Central uniform. It works better with a Pensa uniform. So I bought one that kind of punches this arrowhead looking shape, if you can kind of see that. So not a keystone ticket punch, so kind of glad to have that as well. And then I guess last but not least, uh, kind of the big moment of the weekend was uh, the unveiling and publishing of my main 70, of my main central 470 model, excuse me. So uh, I actually ended up renewing my membership with the New England Steam Corp. This is just one of the brochures that they have. In a similar vein, I got one of their uh, decals, which I'll have to find a good place to put this. Um, then not necessarily related to New England Steam Corp specifically, but on the 470 subject, I did actually get another print of uh, some 470 artwork by David Tutwiler. Um, David Tutwiler does create some incredible artwork. I have, I think, as many as six, maybe seven of his prints. I think it's at least five. But uh, this is the newest one. This also features 470. Really love the uh, really love the look of this one. I probably will still get some get some more from uh, from him. Does incredible work. And then of course I got the book. This is a uh, pretty very recent publication. We're uh, going over the railroad paintings that he's created. So a lot of cool stuff in there. Of course I won't show that off to respect the people that buy the book. But very happy to have that. I'll have to find a good place for this at some point. <laughs> I'm running out of room to put up artwork, but. I'll figure something out. So that is, uh, I guess you could call the show haul for Amherst 2024. All right, it's um, Wednesday after the show. Um, I guess I should do like a more formal wrap up of this vlog uh, and the show, I guess, overall, because it was quite a big show. It was a one of the best train shows that I've been to in quite a while, um, just to be completely honest. This was a lot of fun. Um, there were so many parts of it that I enjoyed and so many, um, so many good moments that really made the show, um, so memorable and so enjoyable. <clears throat> um, let's start with the, uh, LGMS layout. So, um, in the past, I haven't done a whole lot of running on LGMS layouts, just kind of the nature of the way people build LGMS layouts and the way that LGMS layouts are assembled at conventions should... Sometimes there's less emphasis on putting the layout together uh, with the idea of keeping tables as level as possible. It just, it just happens. You can never get anything perfect. This time, though, there was a an actual effort to make a loop that was theoretically that would theoretically be more forgiving for steam locomotives and stuff like that. And this was not done for just me. This was done for a number of other people. Um, that did not run as much last year during the show. And that did its job very well. Um, it was so nice to have my models work uh, fully and properly, uh, which I know that they should and can um, on a public layout like that, on a public gr uh, joint group layout like that. Um, I got an hour and 15 minutes out of 763. I took up the entire hour plus that I was supposed to run that. Uh, I ran the Mohawk for about an hour or two, no problems there. Um, I ran 12, I ran 13, I ran 19 for a little bit. Of course, I ran 470. Nothing had any major problems. Um, so that was definitely very nice um, to do. And as such, I was at the layout a lot more, which was nice. I was able to talk to the public. I was able to run trains and enjoy that and enjoy hanging around with my friends. So compared to last year, I don't feel, and it's pretty ob probably obvious in watching this video, that I didn't really walk around anywhere near as much uh, this year, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's just kind of a different way of enjoying the show. But um, the layout was a lot of fun, and I'm glad to have been a part of it. I'm glad that I got to run my trains, and I'm glad that other people had uh, had a good time too. <clears throat> the show was fantastic overall. If you uh, have only seen photos of the Amherst show, it doesn't really do it justice because there are literally four buildings, two large and two small uh filled with stuff and it is hard even just as a as an attendee not even a somebody displaying at the show to see everything in the show during the public hours on saturday and sunday it is a lot it is a lot to walk through if you really want to stop and look at things properly it's a lot to see um so i didn't record uh very much of that at all just 
kind of the way it went this year. It just was so busy um, just with everything else. I was able to walk around, of course, got some good deals, as you saw in the haul section of this video, um, which I'm very pleased with. Um, it was great to finally meet Matt Dawson in person. I've never met him in person, but awesome to meet him. Um, several other people and good friends coming back for the Timonium show, several people that hadn't been there before or hadn't been there recently. Uh, Conrad and Rob, for example. Um, JT and Kale and I were hanging around for the majority of the weekend. Of course, it's always good to see Monty, Chuck, Elroy. Um, Tom was there, the gentleman who brought the New York Central Diesels. He was there. Um, there's other people that I know I'm already forgetting, but also the any lug guys, which I didn't talk to very much at all, apart from Mike Ripley, um, which was, uh, which was very nice. Um, just kind of the way that this event worked out. I didn't, it was kind of difficult to, uh, to do everything. And unfortunately talking with the any lug guys fell through the cracks, but, uh, of course I did make sure to say that, uh, as an extend my thanks, uh, for allowing me and by extension, the LGMS guys to tack onto their layout for the weekend because technically it was their display um that was the name um that was the name that we were kind of grouped under on the um on the layout plan so thank you to ne any lug new england lego users group for allowing us to come and crash your weekend um but no it was a lot of fun and i think that they had just about as much fun as we did um and i guess the big thing for me this weekend was publishing 470 so 470 is out there out in the public gotten a lot of positive attention so far which i'm uh, honored and thrilled to see. Um, a lot of people noticed it and recognized it this weekend. A lot of people uh, recognized it and were uh, able to enjoy it and appreciate it on the New England Steam Corporation table, um, which is where the model sat for the majority of the weekend for a couple of reasons. <clears throat> One is because that was the goal that I had in finishing the model for this show is to display it with them again, like I had uh, the previous year. Of course, last year it wasn't finished, but you get the idea. Um, that was the goal for this show, and kind of in in a much smaller part, but as but secondly, um, 470 is not, it operates obviously, but it's not operating the way I had designed it and meant to be operated. Of course, I need a powered baggage car or powered RPO or whatever to run longer passenger trains. That has always been the goal from the start. Um, in my opinion, it doesn't detract anything from the finished 470 model. It's just the kind of the nature of building a Pacific type like 470 or at least that's the way it is for me right now. Maybe that'll change in the future, but you know, here we are. So I didn't run 470 a ton. Uh, I did run it enough, of course, to get some really good video, and I did end up running it for probably about, I think a combined total of maybe 45 minutes across the, across the two days of the public hours, which is certainly enough for me, enough to demonstrate it to uh, some of the New England Steam guys, to the general public, and uh, to demonstrate it for myself because... Um, of course, you are aware if you watch my channel that I don't have a dedicated layout. <laughs> so going to shows and running on layouts is kind of um, what I uh, what I do apart from running on my floor. So being able to run it on the LGMS layout and get shots of it, for example, blasting through uh, JD, JT's uh, Waterbury Vermont module was just awesome. And thank you for JT as well for letting me borrow all of your passenger cards for that because I don't have mine built yet. They are coming, by the way. And probably the biggest thing this weekend regarding the 470 was meet, meeting uh, Richard Gleck in person. Um, I've never met him before in person. We've emailed, we've had dozens of email correspondences together. Um, he was very well aware of the project. He, was, he has seen this model come together since before it left the digital format uh, in studio. So he is very familiar with this project and was... Hearing him sing the praises of the model this weekend was probably one of the most gratifying experiences I've had with this hobby. Um, he is ex extremely, uh, he extremely appreciated the, the model that I was able to put together and extremely appreciated being able to see it in person. Um, and I'm very grateful for uh, having had the opportunity to do so and be able to present it to him in person. Um, so that was... Uh, that was probably the biggest thing for me this weekend. So I guess that just about wraps up the vlog. Uh, even recording this Wednesday evening after the show, it's currently January 31st. The Timonium Maryland show is coming up this coming weekend from right now, and I would like to vlog that as well. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I did not vlog it last year, but I did go. Uh, kind of had a similar unfortunate experience. I didn't get, I didn't run uh, a whole lot of my stuff last year uh, on the layout for similar reasons, but we'll see about this year. 
Um, but I'm looking forward to the show anyways. Timonium, uh, theoretically, should be a lot less intense than Amherst was. So I'm kind of welcoming that at this point. Um, Amherst was quite a hardcore show, for lack of a better term, but it was a lot of fun. Timonium is going to be a lot of fun, but for a few different reasons. But of course, I'm looking forward to that too. So I've been wrapping this up for 8 minutes and 30 seconds now. I won't talk very much more, but I'd like to thank everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this probably pretty lengthy train show vlog. Uh, hopefully more to come in the future, um, and I'll leave it there. So thanks for watching once again. Talk to you all later.